farthest reaches of the universe, there once existed a planet known as Krypton, a planet that burned like a green star in the distant heavens. There, civilization was far advanced and had brought forth a race of supermen whose mental and physical powers were developed to the absolute peak of human perfection. But there came a day when giant quakes threatened to destroy Krypton forever. One of the planet's leading scientists, sensing the approach of doom, placed his infant son in a small rocket ship and sent it hurtling in the direction of the Earth just as Krypton exploded. The rocket ship sped through star-studded space landing safely on Earth with its precious burden, Krypton's sole survivor. A passing motorist found the uninjured child and took it to an orphanage. As the years went by and the child grew to maturity, he found himself possessed of amazing physical powers. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. The infant of Krypton is now the man of steel, Superman. To best be in a position to use his amazing powers in a never-ending battle for truth and justice, Superman has assumed the disguise of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Kent, I want to see you. Just received another threatening note. Okay, Mr. White. Lois, another note from the mad scientist. Coming in, Chief. Now listen to this warning. He plans to strike tonight. Beware, you fools. My electrothanasia ray strikes tonight at 12. Total destruction will come to those who laughed at me and failed to heed my warnings. Beware, I strike at midnight. This nut may prove dangerous. Kent, you help Lois follow up her lead. She may have an angle on this thing. Yes, sir. But, Chief, I'd like the chance to crack the story on my own. Well, no. Thanks, Chief. But, Lois... Chief, don't you think that's a dangerous mission? Story, Miss Lane. 
looks like a job for Superman.
faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. With a single pound, this amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. Give me a follow-up on this bullet car story. Attention. The destruction of your police station today was only a small demonstration of our power. Unless your mayor turns over the entire funds of the city treasury, power plants, firehouses, and all municipal buildings will be next. Take heed. This is your last warning. What are the authorities going to do about this, Mr. Mayor? We won't be intimidated by criminal threats. Law and order must and will prevail. <laughs> This looks like a job for Superman.
course. Another great scoop for you. It was easy. Thanks to Superman. This stabilizer is one of the most effective yet devised, representing an investment in years. How'd you like to be making a test fight in this, Lois? Hmm, maybe I will. <laughs> Fine chance. Everyone off, please. Everyone off. Come on, Lois. That's us.
continue with voyage to Tokyo. Bomber. Attention, all pilots. Giant bomber being stolen. Take off immediately. <laughs> Where placed bomb will stop pursuit. Looks like a job for Superman. this plane, Lord. I'd feel much safer if Superman were here.
Dr. Jordan, yet you admit these fingerprints are yours. Yes, but... but you don't... That's all. Can't speaking. Hello, Daily Planet. This is Dr. Wilson of the Egyptian Museum. I've just uncovered something that may free Miss Hogan. Yes, Doctor. Uh, I, I've been feeling much better lately, but I'll be right over. I'll see you later, Lois. Doctor's orders. Doctor, my eye. Dr. Jordan was the world's foremost student of hieroglyphics. Most of our priceless specimens were brought back by him, even the mummy of King Tush. Among his possessions, I uncover this ancient Egyptian tablet and find it to be a secret curse of the tomb of King Tush. He who disturbs the eternal sleep of King Tush shall perish. This tablet may well be Miss Hogan's passport to freedom. Come with me, please. Upper Nile was ruled by an old and powerful king. He had been warring with the Lower Nile for many years, and just before the old king died, he called his son to him, a young boy of twelve. He commanded his giant guards to swear an oath of eternal allegiance to the boy prince to guard him constantly in this world and the next. Shortly after, the old king died. A youth of twelve now ruled the kingdom of ten million people, but the boy was not fashioned for such responsibility, and being of a sickly nature, soon became ill himself. Never was a person attended more faithfully than this youth, yet he withered away and soon died. True to their oath of allegiance, each of the royal gods drank poison, so that they might continue to protect the spirit of their young king in the Valley of the Dead. Here in these catacombs, Dr. Jordan has reconstructed the burial vault exactly as he first discovered it in one of the pyramids. Working for years in absolute and frenzied secrecy, he finally duplicated an ancient mystic formula, which he called the fluid of life. Just before he was found dead, Dr. Jordan had inoculated each of the mummies of the giant guards. They were supposed to return to life, but somehow the test failed. Dr. Jordan was found here at the feet of King Tush. The rest you know. But what you don't know, Mr. Kent, and what I am equally certain of, is that Dr. Jordan violated the ancient warning by attempting to open the coffin of King Tush. needle. That's how Dr. Jordan was killed. Yes, and Miss Hogan is a free woman.
Jane, Morgan, set, three. <laughs> this is one time I've scooped you, Lois. Yes, lucky for you, I was hurt. Incidentally, who told you I was at the museum? My mummy done told me.